Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making fortune cookies and I am going to make them with a theme of Valentine's Day. Now you can make fortune cookies with any theme and any colors you want and I'm going to show you some of my tricks. Now fortune cookies are really not that hard and they're from a category of cookie known as a wafer cookie. So that's a type of cookie, very simple batter, only about six ingredients and very thin batter that when you spread it, it makes a very thin cookie that is very malleable when it comes out of the oven and it's hot. And as it cools, it sets and gets very crispy. And that's where we get our beautiful, crackly, crispy fortune cookie. And it's super easy. You might know fortune cookies or a wafer cookie known as a twill or a tui, and you can shape them in any shape you want. Matter of fact, I have another video of twills or tuis in French that are shaped into bowls and spirals and spoons, actually like a spoon. So you can shape them in any way you want. So let's get on with our fortune cookies. It's super easy. In my electric mixer, I have two egg whites, two large egg whites. And then I have a half a cup of super fine sugar. Now, if you don't have super fine sugar, and you can usually find it in the grocery store, just get regular sugar and you can pulse it through a food processor a couple of times. It's just finely, finely ground granulated sugar. It just helps everything dissolve better so your cookie's not very gritty. And then we're going to put our paddle attachment on and we're going to just give it a good whirl around without, we're not creaming anything. We don't have any butter in here right now. We're just gonna mix it up. Now, once we mix that up, we're gonna be adding half a cup of flour. This is all purpose flour. And I've even made these gluten free, so you can use some other flours and experiment. After that, we're gonna add some butter, some melted butter. I have two and a half tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. And I have one and a half tablespoons of heavy cream and I'm gonna add a half a tablespoon, I'm sorry, a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. So everything is sort of getting nice and blended. Nothing really to look at at this point. I'm just gonna get my flour in there, all right? And you wanna get that mixed on low speed because you don't want it to come back at you. That would be terrible. You'll be wearing your batter. And then once the flour is in there, things start getting a little thicker. So I'm gonna sort of scrape it down with a rubber spatula. Just give it one good sort of go around on the side. All right. At this point, it's a little bit thicker, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like in a second. So this is what it looks like if you want to see it, all right, right now. It's going to get a little thinner. It's a very thin batter, but very, very luscious batter. We're going to add our butter, remember, two and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter, one and a half tablespoons of the heavy cream with a half a teaspoon of our pure vanilla extract. That's our batter. We're done. C'est fini. So I'm going to take this off. And the batter looks sort of silky looking. It looks, um, I don't know, it has this sheen to it. And it's lovely. It's just lovely. Let me get rid of this. Now, this is where the fun comes in. So. I'm going to show you what my batter looks like. So you can see it's, it's thin. It doesn't make a lot. So this can make 14 to 16 uh, cookies. It can make small fortune, fortune cookies, and we're going to make big ones. So this might make about 8 to 12 uh, larger fortune cookies, but you can make any size you want, and I'm going to show you how to form them. You don't need a Silipat mat. We don't need anything complicated like that. Let me show you. So I have preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a sheet pan and I have parchment paper. Now I decided, I just randomly decided I was going to make about five inch in diameter fortune cookies. So I have a bowl, five inches. You can make smaller ones. 
because the ones that you get in, let's say, an Asian uh, restaurant can be very small, but we're going to make them a little bit bigger. So I have parchment paper, and what I did was, with a pencil or even a pen, just sort of put it on your pan, on your sheet pan, and then with a pencil, I'm going to trace. And I've already done that, so you just trace around. And I've made, let's see, five here, all right? Now, because this is a pencil and you really don't want to be eating the pencil, flip this over so that the pencil markings are under, but you can still see the tracings of your circles, all right? Now, it's a little slippery to be spreading. We're going to be spreading with an offset spatula within the circle trace mark. We're going to be spreading the batter, and you want it thin. So this is where you have to be a little bit more careful when you do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a little batter, get rid of my parchment here, and I'm just going to do a little dollop in every corner so it stays steady. And even put some in the middle, all right? And then I'm going to bring this over, and this should help it adhere to that baking sheet. All right, so nothing moves as we're spreading. There are twill molds that are circular. You can get them if you want, and that you can use a silipat mat or a silicone baking mat. Here, it's even easier. So I would like to have a Valentine's theme, so I'm going to get another color going. So I'm going to take a little bit of my batter, and because I don't need too much, um, I'm just going to take maybe, I don't know, maybe an eighth of the batter, a third of the batter, whatever you want to do, depending on how much color you want. And I'm going to dye it really red. Valentine's Day, right? So I have some red gel food coloring in here. And there it is. It's beautiful. And I'm going to make a nice contrast with our sort of tan batter and a red color for some patterns that I'm going to make. And I'm going to show you how, how pretty you can make them. All right. So once that is done, and make sure you scrape the spoon off because you're going to get your food coloring in there. And you don't want to get stripes. All right. So what I'm going to do is get a pastry bag. And I filled it with a small plain tip. Any size you want. I just randomly chose this. This is like a size 8, I think. Um, you can make them smaller. And if you don't want to use red and do a Valentine's theme, you could use a teaspoon of unsweetened cocoa powder. Powder. Just mix it in there with a little bit of the batter. And that'll give you like a nice chocolatey uh, dark brown color that'll be beautiful as a contrast to your tan, to your tan batter. So we're just gonna get this ready. It's very easy to do. And you're only making a little bit of this. You can always make a little more. I'm always surprised at how dinky the batter looks, but it really does make a good amount. Okay, so you're just going to pull this, all right, and you're just going to put this on the side, all right, because we're not ready for it yet. Now we're going to take a teaspoon, about a teaspoon. Don't overfill your circles. So I'm going to actually... So you're going to put a teaspoon in here. Sometimes when I make them too thick, they don't get hard after. They stay more cakey, and I really want to make them nice and thick. So I'm only going to make um, two for you right now. You really don't want to fill all these circles with batter, because if you do, remember, you have only a short window of time before they firm up. So I usually do, unless you're an octopus and you can actually... Uh, shape them very, very quickly. But what I like to do is make one or two at a time. Have these circles here, just so you can alternate circles. And you're just going to spread to the edge of each circle. It's sort of like 
when you do coloring, you want to stay within the lines, right? Same idea. You've got to stay within the lines. And again, you're trying to get a nice thin layer. Nothing thick. And if it's not a perfect circle, don't worry about it. It's going to look beautiful no matter what. All right? So you can see I've got this nice circle here. All right? Now, the one good thing about wafer cookies or twills is when you actually get them out of the oven and they're very malleable, if they do get too crispy on you and you actually say, oh, no, something happened and I couldn't form them fast enough, put them back in the oven. They'll soften up within like 10 to 15 seconds and then take them out again. It's sort of like a do-over. It's fabulous, okay? So once I have this, this one cookie, I want to make one more for you because I want to, I want to do two patterns. I'm sorry. I must do two patterns for you, all right? So I'm going to get one of these, another one of these going. So if you watch, just sort of smear it around. It's sort of like spreading butter on a, on a bagel because it's round, but you really want it nice and thin, okay? Nice and thin. No fancy schmancy equipment, all right? You're just going to go right to the edge, and you want to make sure it's thin. You do not want it to be thick. And you don't want any open patches. So if you see that an area is really not covered with batter, make sure you go back and sort of smear it around. Okay? All right. So now I have my little red food coloring. And I always try it out in a bowl or something to make sure that everything's coming out okay. And it certainly is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle around the outer edge. Just on the border. Just on the border. All right. And I'm going to take a toothpick or a small sharp knife, and I'm just going to go boop, boop, and keep going. And what you have to remember is this is a fortune cookie. It's not going to stay like this. You are actually going to shape it. So what you're going to see is these beautiful patterns afterwards. All right? So the next one, I'm going to do something slightly different. Watch this. So I'm just going to make lines. Okay? Just make lines. Now use your imagination. And again, you don't have to use red. But my theme is the Valentine's Day. And you, we will put a fortune in these. Be my Valentine, be my sweet baboo, whatever you want. Will you marry me? Oh, that would be a cool one. That would be a cool one. Can you imagine someone putting a marriage proposal on a homemade fortune cookie? What? So cool. All right. So I'm going to go one way, and then I'm going to go the other way, and then I'm going to go one way, the other way, one way. Don't worry about it being a little bit over the edge. Don't worry about it. And then the other way. And then they're ready to bake. That's it. Super easy. Again, I'm only making two at a time because they will firm up really fast, faster than I can maybe shape them. So give yourself time to make these. They're loads of fun, but they are hot when they come out. So these are going to bake at 350 degrees for anywhere from six to nine minutes. I like to rotate the pan every two or three minutes and really watch them. I can't give you an exact amount of minutes that they need to bake, but they want, you want to get them light brown. If they're too light, they never firm up. The, the sugar never recrystallizes and gets crispy. So you want to make them light brown. You don't want them to burn. And I'll see you back here because I'm going to put these in the oven for between anywhere from six to eight minutes. See you back in that. So I just took these two out of the oven. They're light brown. And you have, like I said, a certain window of time. 
I have a fortune, be my valentine. I only made one fortune, and I'm gonna take one off. You're gonna need an offset spatula, and they come right off. Look at that, Woo! see how flexible they are? You're gonna flip it upside down, you're gonna put your fortune in, and you're gonna cut it in half, almost, put, you know, like bend it in half like a taco, and then you're going to gently, gently, it's hot. Put them together like that. See that? Fortune cookie! You see it? You see how pretty? And you're just gonna leave it. I do it on the side of a cup. You can do it on, you know, um, anything where you can bend it over an edge, like a bowl. And I'm gonna hold it for a second. And if this one gets a little hard, I'll put it in the oven for a few more seconds. I just want you to see this. Now, this is gonna get harder every time I wait. The longer I wait, the firmer and crisper it is. But is that not the most to die for fortune cookie for Valentine's Day? If my sweet baboo gave me this, I'd be like, oh yeah, I love you. I love you forever because it is stunning. It is gorgeous. It is lovely. It is like the best. Who needs a gift? Who needs chocolate? So I'm going to put this down and I'm going to put this back in the oven because I want to show you something. I did this on purpose. You can see this is sort of like, yeah, it's still not as flexible. I'm afraid it's going to break. So it needs to go back in the oven for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. So I'll see you back here in 15. So I put this one back in the oven until it got really sort of wiggly again, put it on a on a nice flat surface. Remember, this is hot, so you, and you wanna put your, your fortune in there, flip it over. It is hot, so be careful. You might not want kids to do this. And then you bend, either end. So it's sort of like you're making a taco, and then just bend it, and then just hold it. Some people put it into a, a little cup just to hold its shape, but they're so beautiful. Give yourself time to do this. This is something fun to do, an enjoyable activity, because it will take a little while to do. So again, keep it in there. You're going to have so many Valentines, right? This beats the, remember the cards for school, elementary school you used to have to fill out? Well, these are the coolest thing ever. If somebody proposes to somebody using my fortune cookie recipe, I want to hear about it. Please. Oh. <gasps> So here you go. See how beautiful, see the pattern bends and twists and folds and it just looks, it just looks amazing. So you're going to put on a plate, you're going to let it harden. I'm going to bake off the rest of these. See you after. Look how gorgeous these fortune cookies are. These are amazing, right? And wait do you see the next video that I'm going to pair these gorgeous creatures with for Valentine's Day, I almost guarantee you're gonna get a marriage proposal or someone's gonna say, I love you, over and over again. All right, you know what? Let's see what your fortune is, shall we? I'm gonna crack one of these open, let's see. I hope you become a subscriber. Till next time.